It's Saturday, November 13th, 2021. I have a, a handful of articles I want to share with all of you, and I want to recap what has transpired over the past week. Before I do, please make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, why not subscribe to this channel today and hit that bell notification so that you are alerted when the newest videos drop. Also, I dropped a brand new Patreon video on the brand new Patreon channel. Link down below. If you want to come over and check out the new Patreon video, uh, it's showing more empty shelves uh, as I'm out and about filming the empty shelves, um, exposing this supply chain breakdown of what's happening. Go to the link down below and check out my Patreon channel. But without further ado, I want to get right into what's happening right now. I watched a video last night that really made me think. It brought me back to the 2008 crisis. It uh, really uh, will tug at, at your heart. It's uh, titled America's Broken Dream, the middle class families living in motels. My good friend Aaron out in Florida sent this to me. It's on YouTube, uh, a great documentary. And uh, it basically uh, shows you the aftermath of the 2008 housing crash. And I think that you're going to see a lot of similarities in this documentary uh, from back after the housing crash of 2008. And I think you're going to see similarities to what's happening right now. And I think all of you will learn something from it. So check it out. Unbelievable. But they interviewed this one gentleman. And he uh, was a sales manager in the car industry. He talked about how his family had a boat and water skis, how they would go on vacations, how he had a country club membership. He has six kids in this video. And at this point, when this video was shot, he was living um, in, a, in a motel with his wife and six kids for two years. And he made some interesting points and, and statements. And I want to share a, a couple of these. He said, when the market burst and people found out that their homes weren't worth what they thought they were, he said, when jobs disappear, the illusion of security and stability went right with it. And I was like, wow, that's, that's the truth. And unfortunately, a lot of people are going to learn the same lesson that this gentleman learned. And it's going to be people with five, six kids. It's going to be people who had a boat, who had a nice car, who had a nice job. And when this thing hits, ladies and gentlemen, most people are not going to be prepared, just like this gentleman, his family. They interviewed other people uh, in, in this video, uh, old people wandering the streets, people sleeping in their cars, thousands of people living in motels. This is, I think this was filmed around 2010. And it showed the kids, the little kids that really, really paid a severe price here. Um, when the economy took its toll. Uh, kids living from motel to motel, going from school to school. And then they showed car parks, people living in parking lots, gated parking lots, sleeping out of their cars, and then going to work in the morning, coming back to the car park, parking their car, sleeping in their car, and going back to work. Uh, they, they showed one, I believe it was in San Diego. Um, but uh, this is all happening right now. This has been happening for years. These car parks have been popping up, at least here in California, all over the place. Um, really, a lot of similarities to what happened after the 2008 crisis is happening right now before the next crisis even hits. Think about, I really want all of you to think about this. Think about where we were in 2008, where we are now. The debt is so much bigger, uh, the deficits so much bigger, the inflation so much bigger. Uh, what were we, four and a half, five and a half percent interest rates uh, in 08 when the crash happened? So the Fed had, you know, had, had some tools in the toolbox. We're at zero, ladies and gentlemen. We're at zero. And we are now watching people 
uh, at an alarming rate, refi their homes. Uh, mortgage rates drop for a second week. Uh, and this is, in my opinion, keeping the whole housing bubble alive because when the housing bubble goes, ladies and gentlemen, it all goes. But in the meantime, uh, people are refining and many of these people are pulling cash straight out of their homes, using their homes as an ATM. And just as we saw what happened in 2008, it's going to happen all over again, but on a much more grand scale. You know, I was talking to, uh, to a friend of mine yesterday and, and we were just saying, you know, they can lower, they can continue to lower um, mortgage rates, but they can go to, to 1% if they want. But if you don't have a job that pays a real income, an income that's not being eaten alive by inflation, it doesn't matter what the mortgage rate is. Because if you're not working, if you don't have a real income, you're not going to be able to buy a house. A record number, this is coming from CNN, ladies and gentlemen, a record number of Americans quit their jobs in September. 4.4 million Americans quit their jobs last month. 267 people last week filed first-time jobless claims. How are people, again, I've asked this question in multiple videos, how are people paying their bills? I guess uh, they're just living off their cryptos, uh, they're refining their houses and, and living off the cash, uh, they're living off credit cards. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just watching this video from last night on these people living in motels, and some of them a year, a year and a half a motel, uh, this guy with six kids living in a motel room for two years. Um, I look at where we're at today, and this is gonna be so much worse. Uh, again, the debts and deficits are so much, so, so, so much more extreme than they were back in 08. And now we have 4.4 million people quitting their jobs. I mean, this whole thing, is alarming. Uh, we've never seen anything like this. We're in an economy, uh, a time in history we've never been before, ladies and gentlemen. And how many people are going to be so unprepared when this thing hits? So many people back in the day, in the last crisis of 08, had no money saved up. How many people actually have money saved up today? And as I continue to read these articles, this doesn't um, really give me too much comfort uh, knowing uh, what's going to happen when the rug gets pulled out. Tur Turkey prices up 23% as Thanksgiving approaches. Um, if you um, watch my Patreon video that I posted last night, uh, I'm at a Walmart and they literally had maybe five turkeys in the entire store left. Uh, they were 98 cents a pound. And I wonder how many of these turkeys that were at Walmart yesterday were from last Thanksgiving. Uh, I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, here's another one. Consumer sentiment hits 10-year low while workers quit jobs in record numbers. One in four scaled back their standard of living. Never saw this in 2008. We never saw consumer sentiment um, as low as we're seeing it now. We've never saw people quitting jobs back in 2008 like, like we're seeing now. This is, this is completely uh, unimaginable uh, what we're seeing. Medicare Part B premiums up 2022, jump by 14.5% from this year, far above the estimated rise in costs. Uh, premium B, I believe, is for outpatient care. The standard premium for, for Part B will be $170.10 next year, far from the estim estimate of $158.50. The deductible will be much higher as well. It will be $233, up $30. That's 14.8%. We did not have anything close to this type of inflation back in 08. We didn't have 111 cargo ships sitting uh, on the West Coast. I mean, this whole thing is getting so out of control, ladies and gentlemen. America is hiring record number of robots. Companies added a record number of robots in the first nine months of this year. When I was at Walmart yesterday, and let me let me please emphasize, I was not shopping there, just shooting some video. But um, one thing I noticed, and I have not, um, sh I've not shopped at a Walmart in in over two years. But one thing I noticed was the amount of cashiers uh, compared to the self-checkout. 
there were two cashiers. The rest, uh, the rest of it was self checkout. So they have pretty much replaced 80, 90 percent uh, of humans in the cashier department, and pretty soon it'll be 100 percent. But um, this is going to be another problem uh, for America as uh, companies are going to replace so many jobs. They're talking about replacing trucks um, with, with th these, you know, new technologies, uh, driverless trucks. Uh, you look at the Amazon warehouses and how they can load and unload with robots. The auto industry is, you know, a majority of it is robotics already, and it's going to continue to replace uh, human jobs. And we're going to come to a point where I think people are going to wish at some point that they actually had a job. And if you're sitting on the couch today, you're not producing anything, you're not earning a paycheck. Look, these may not be dream jobs, most of them in the service sector, but hey, you can easily go out and make $15, $18, $20 at one of these jobs right now. And that will allow you to put some cash away, that will allow you to buy a little extra food, a little extra water, a couple you know, silver, silver coins. It's going to allow you to do something which is better than doing nothing. Bloomberg. Most expensive gasoline in America, close to record highs. Right here in California, as I make this video, we are only two cents from our all-time high, which was, I think, back in about 2010, right around there. We're two cents away from the all-time high. And again, when you look at the amount of people, 107 million people not in the labor force, 4.4 million people quitting their jobs last month, 267,000 people filed first-time jobless claims last week. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how people are doing it. Here, here's another article I find fascinating: two hundred eighty-three billion nine hundred twenty-seven million dollars of federal tax collections set a record in October. This tells me, and this tells you, we do not have a revenue problem in America. We have a spending problem in America. Federal spending was about four hundred and fifty billion dollars in October. October. 450 billion going out, 283 billion coming in. You see a problem? So uh, we have uh, revenue coming in, but we are spending way too much. Way too much of it is going out. And that's a big problem here in America. And this is another reason why we're going to go into the Greatest Depression is because the system cannot stop spending and the average household cannot stop spending. The system is in massive debt. The average household is in massive debt. Another article today, inflation pin shoppers are turning to discount stores. Spending at discount stores was up 65% last week compared uh, with 2019 and 21% from the prior week. Wow. I mean, unbelievable. Now that the relief programs are over, the, the you know $600 benefits, the $300 benefits, uh, all this is expired, people are looking for deals as the money is drying up, as now um, they are more conscious of where they're spending their dollars and how they're spending their dollars. And again, uh, you, you know, when I read these articles, when you look at the data and you watch what happened in 2008, we are already seeing similarities of, of the aftermath of 2008. And this thing hasn't even crashed yet. This economy is collapsing, but it has not imploded. It has not collapsed completely. It has begun. And you are watching it collapse on a daily basis. But the bottom will be pulled out. And when it does, you're going to know that things have imploded. Things have collapsed. And if they were this bad back in 2010, uh, two years after the collapse, um, imagine what you're going to see after this one. Again, the inflation that we, we have never, most of us have never seen this kind of inflation. Um, the debt, the deficits, uh, the, 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 the people missing in the labor force, these markets so manipulated. And let's not forget, bond bubble, real estate bubble, stock market bubble, bubbles everywhere. And uh, I cannot really emphasize any more than I, than I already have the importance of preparing and being ready for this collapse. This is going to be uh, an economic nightmare. And 
again, watching this video last night and just watching little kids having to live out of these $149 a week motels, people having to sell their cars because they couldn't even afford car insurance and they needed cash, uh, people losing their houses, and then people having to go to the service sector, low paying minimum wage jobs. This is what's happening right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is what's happening right now and it hasn't even collapsed yet. So I wanted to uh, make this video, share all this with you. It was uh, another uh, very, very interesting week. Uh, I'm out today running some errands and you know, it's just more and more homeless people everywhere and uh, RVs parked now, you know, uh, off the freeway and homeless people wandering around everywhere. And it's, uh, it's going to get bad. It's going to get real bad. And um, there's no going back. No going back. You, you know, these people who just deny the truth, deny reality. I pray for these people because they have no idea what is about to happen. And as I leave you today, let me remind all of you, time is not your friend. There are people writing me, you know, telling me that they didn't believe this two years ago. And, oh, JB, you were right. Two years ago, three years ago, you know, these people write me, I, 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 I didn't believe you. And now, now I don't know what to do. Now I'm scared. Now, now um, I'm freaking out. Look, all I can say to anybody right now is take today, and prepare. Take every day that you have. Who knows? We may have another year. We might have 18 months. We might have 18 days. I don't know. All I know is do everything you can do right now to put the odds in your favor to make sure that you survive this collapse, this depression, to make sure that your kids are safe, that, that your whole family survives this mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. And people are going to have to start thinking for themselves. I don't have all the answers. You know, my situation is probably going to be a lot different than a lot of other people's situation. I've been preparing for years now. And if you haven't begun to prepare, today's a perfect day to do it. But if you continue to put this off and procrastinate, you're going to be one of these people at one of these budget motels, uh, hoping that you're not going to get evicted because the next stop after the uh, $149 a week budget motel is living in a cardboard box on a sidewalk on Hollywood Boulevard. Okay? That's reality. God bless all of you. Have a good weekend. Walk very, very close to God. I'm telling you, this is really becoming a, a spiritual war. And if you're not on the right side of this, you're going to lose. Talk to you soon.